Hey, what's up, y'all? This is your boy, Coach Marshall, from the More Than the Coach podcast. And today, I got a special guest. I'm actually in the studio with my man, K. Raj. How you doing today, brother? Man, I can't complain, man. Real. Hey. I can't complain at all. Before we get going, man, I'm going to break down a little bit about you so my guests will know what you do. Uh, K. Raj been doing tat since 2011. He started in his mom kitchen on his mom kitchen table, where he's been going hard, take, uh, taking in his crab, taking his crab very seriously, and he's self-taught. He's learned from a couple of his mentors along the way. Um, I can't say the one cat name. Bo Willie or Co Young. Co Young, that's yeah, it. Co Young. Young and Bo Willie, those was his mentors. K. Rod drove 18 hours from New Orleans to watch his mentors work and teach him the game that he do today here in Saginaw. In 2017, he opened up his first shop following his primary location here in Saginaw. 2018, he opened up a shop in Texas making boss moves. Good job with that man, too, bro. Thanks, man. For real. He loves to see the happiness on his customer's face after he does tats. And if y'all didn't know, he a freehand tat. He don't come in here with no pictures. You tell him your idea, and he make miracles happen. He's very passionate about what he do. So everybody, give a warm welcome to my guest tonight, Mr. K. Raj. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, One sir. thing I do want to correct, though, is that I opened up my tattoo shop in Houston in 2020. One. Okay. 2021. Okay. Yeah. 2021. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. So you just got these three locations then, or mm -hmm. you got more? No. So I closed the one in Houston. Okay. I closed the one in Houston. I only opened up the one in Houston because I had a son. Okay. But I have a son out there. That was the only reason why I opened the one in Houston. Oh, okay, then. Yeah, so that I can be a father and be able to make money at the same time while I'm out there. I know that's right. I love that, man. First off, bro, I got to tell you again, it's a beautiful establishment, you know. Um, can you let my guests know where they can find you? Uh, 318 South Hamilton, Suite 10, upstairs is what I tell everybody. Um, yeah, hmm. Saginaw, Michigan. Okay. So, man, start with some good questions, bro. I know you said you started in Jamal's crib. Mm -hmm. What made you start? Just So, the main thing I would say that made me start, man, was I didn't want to work for nobody. That's that's the that was the first thing. Um, I had been drawing since I was little. Okay. Um, since I was a little little kid, I started out drawing. The way I started out drawing, I was drawing pictures to girls. Mm -hmm. Like I and the thing is so crazy how you don't know that you live in. Like you don't know that you creating the tools or you were establishing the tools to become a better man mm -hmm. when you were a kid. That's why I be so big on people like stopping their kids from doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Because I like I, I used to literally draw pictures for Cairo, Cairo, <laughs> relax. Um, I used to draw pictures for girls like based off of they book bag, like whatever character on their book bag mm. and stuff like that. Like when I was in elementary, middle school, Man. or I paid attention. I used to so I learned by paying attention to details to yeah. draw them a picture, basically saying that I like. Okay. So and I ended up <laughs> using them skills now in tattooing. When I'm paying attention to people, they telling me what it is they want. I'm paying attention to the way they carry themselves. I'm paying attention to what details they led with when they're telling me what they want. Okay. Like, you know, all of that kind of oh, yeah. factors into the design of the tattoo at the end of the day. So, yeah, I didn't even know that I was uh, hmm. establishing those skills early like that. Man, that's cool, man. So what makes, what motivates k Raj every day besides these two young ones? I already yeah, know that. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Um, hmm. Really, man, I, I would say what motivates me is making today better than yesterday before tomorrow comes. Mm, that's deep. That's that's pretty much the best way I can put it, bro. Like is making sure that I'm doing something today that's gonna make tomorrow a little easier. Okay. Yeah. I like that. So who are some of your role models besides the two cats down in uh Louisiana in this tattoo game? Oh uh, man, to be honest. To be honest, bro, I don't really pay people that much attention. Mm. To be honest, like, so it ain't really that it, I wouldn't. It's not that I wouldn't call them my role or call people my role models. Yeah, it's just that I feel like once you like, like once you start looking or paying attention to one thing, you miss everything else. Mm. So it's like I might I like if I start paying attention to one person, like this is my role model. 
I can miss the person that I could have learned something from standing mm. right next to him. That's right. So it's more so I just kind of keep an open mind and I, I'm a big firm believer in the mind only see what it's familiar with. Mm. Like so the that. more you familiarize yourself with what you want for yourself, the more things stand out to you. And I feel like that's why it's so hard to really corner who mm -hmm. I would look up to or anything yeah. like that. Because it's like, I just feel like, yeah, the more you familiarize yourself with what you want, the more things stand out to you. It's almost like buying a new car. Mm -hmm. You didn't realize that it was that many cars in that color until mm -hmm. you bought that car. And I feel like that's how your goals are set up. That's true. Like once you focus on what you want or what it is you want for yourself, everything kind of starts standing out to you. Okay. And so I feel like in the midst of that, it's hard to just focus on one or, one or five people. That's true. So I like that. So in this game, man, it's different. Like, I'm a coach. So in mm -hmm. coaching, you got a lot of highs, you got a lot of lows. Mm -hmm. What's some of your highs and lows in tattooing? Man, my highs, I feel like my highs are like the, the end result of mm -hmm. giving somebody what they want. Mm -hmm. And I would say my lows is the negotiation process. Hmm. Okay. I feel like that's my low. My low is the negotiation process. Like, bro, the, the whole, like, the going back and forth, like, about the price and mm -hmm. what it should be and them not wanting to. They want a lot, but they don't want to spend that much. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like that's the only thing that really, like, irks my nerves, like, for yeah. more and than it, anything. And in this city, I bet you deal with that a lot, oh, man. being a smaller. Yeah, it's, it's bad, man. Yeah. It's bad. I mean, it's cool, because I get it. Um, But it's bad because, it's bad because it's like they know why they coming to me. Mm -hmm. They just want me to be the same price as everybody else. Yeah. Which, um, hey, relax. Oh, we live, y'all. He got the yeah. boys in here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's a, we all about the kids. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but that's cool. So, what's a typical day in the life of K Rock? Ooh, I shoot the gym. Shoot, my, I hit the gym in the morning. Uh, early seven. I'm up at five forty-five every morning. Hmm. Besides Sunday, because the gym not open till eight. Hmm. So I get up at seven on Sundays, but um. 5.45, I'm, I'm up, getting dressed. By 6.30, I'm out the door to the gym. Hopefully by 7, I'm at the gym, stretching, getting started. Um, I'm out the gym by 10. I usually schedule my appointments either between 11 and 12, depending on if I got two that day. Knock out the tattoos, then shoot. If I got my son, I try to be done at a reasonable time, get him fed, give him mm -hmm. a bath, and shoot. I'm getting ready for the next day. Pretty okay. much is how mine. Pretty much how I go, man. That's cool. What's the longest session you ever had doing tax? Ooh. Um, Cause I seen some of your work on Instagram, and I know it made no two and three hour job. You know, probably eleven hours was the longest one, and that was when I got flew out to Watertown, New York, okay. to do a back piece, and we mm. literally was in their kitchen for eleven, dang, eleven hours. Yeah. I hope they fed you while you were there. Yeah, we okay. ate. We ate. Yeah, we were snowed in. though. that's the crazy oh, part. Man. We had a we had a piece of delivery man. That was my first time seeing a piece a piece of delivery man deliver pizza in snow like in the the little yeah. The, he came in like the little Eskimo little like shoes. Yeah, thing. yeah. And he's stumping through, and I'm talking about the snow was so high, and I'm just like, bro, this is crazy. Wow. But it was normal to him. Like he just like, yeah, you know, here's your pizza. That's so, cool. Yeah, that was cool. But other than that. <laughs> That's all right, right there, for real. So I know, like we talked about, you freestyle a lot of stuff. What, like, say if I came in and I wanted a picture of my family, mm -hmm. my three, uh, three kids and five granddaughters. How do you go by figuring that out, like doing Where that design? It? Yeah. Um, something like that. I would either say would be the back would be the best place. Mm. The back or um. Because portraits are better on flat surfaces. Okay. So as I mean, it, like, so how many did that be? Five. Mm -hmm. So um, if we did like the arm, it had to be a completely clear arm. Okay. Because you only got so many panels to do a portrait on the okay. arm. You got one, two. Depending on how you, you know, what I'm saying, you can put one on the inside of the arm, the outside, and then that's it. Mm. And then the leg, you got all of the leg on the face on the leg, but. There ain't too many dudes just getting portraits. That's why you see a lot of the NBA um like players and stuff getting the, the portraits on their leg. Okay. Because of how flat the leg is, yeah. the consistency of the skin, the thickness. So it's like it kind of make it easy to tattoo, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Portraits and stuff like that. And then it's kind of rounded too. So it'll get a portrait a little light depending on how you shade it. Okay. So yeah, it's a lot of 
Yeah, I mean, I would probably say if it was you, I'd probably say your back though. Okay. Yeah. What's the hardest place to tack? The hardest place to tack probably would be. Mm, I'd probably say the front of the neck. Mm, yeah. The front of the neck probably would be. And I wouldn't even say it's the hardest. I would say it's the most challenging because you swallowing, you know, you got, you, you breathing, like, you yeah. know, there's a lot going on. The stomach kind of too, but you can kind of, you can kind of predict the, the, the stomach going up and down. But yeah, yeah you don't know when somebody just going to be like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'd probably say the front of the throat, Damn. like the throat or the, um, yeah, the throat probably would be. I bet that's painful as hell, too. Man, yeah. I mean. Hmm. Oh, you yeah, did? Yeah, yeah. I got a front of mine done. Yeah, okay. it wasn't that bad. It oh, wasn't okay. that bad, but. I think the worst to me was inside arm. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I think I almost yeah. fell off the table when it got yeah, it done. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I don't have that done either. That's yeah. That's crazy thing. The part right here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that done. When he got yeah. right under that armpit. I was yeah. kind of tapped out, man. Mm-hmm. I was like, hold on, bro. Yeah. For real. Have you ever had anybody tap out on you? Oh, plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of times. Yeah, plenty of times. Like, you get to a point where, yeah, you get to compound in that detail, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah. That's cool. That's all right. So what's your favorite style of tattooing, though? Because I know you did multiple. Mm-hmm. But what's... Mm-hmm. Oh. You want to watch Mickey Mouse? Okay. Hmm. Um, I'll probably say... um. Mm, I don't really have. If I had to like kind of classify or try to define it a little bit, I would say new school. New school, okay. Yeah, new school is a like new school style. It's like a lot of soft shading on the inside, small line. Hmm. Then it's like a bold outline around the outside of it all okay. to make it like pop more. Yeah. Which is the the my go to style on dark skin because you got to let the skin breathe a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, my go to style. My go-to style on brown skin is new school. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so. Teaching me some things here. Yeah. For real. Definitely got to let the skin breathe. Like, our skin, we got, like, the, our white blood cells, the melanin in our skin makes our white blood cells way stronger. Mm. Like, versus, you know. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's way stronger. Okay. So, it, it, from the time you put it in the skin, yeah. your skin working to get it out. Damn. So, Yeah. And that's, I mean, because it's a foreign substance that you're putting in it. Yeah. So it's like your skin working against you the whole time. Wow. So that's why execution is the, the key. Because any little mishap, skin going to get it on up out of there. Hey, so, that's cool. Yeah. That's why that's why shading, because you you heavy, like it's more needles. So it's like you, you kind of can, that's why my go-to style is new school. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes on brown skin, lines don't take. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can keep on line and it just don't. For some hmm. reason, I don't know. Yeah, I could show you my first ever tattoo I had done. I won't say who done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro. <laughs> yeah. I think it yeah. was the worst ninety five bucks I ever spent in my life. Man, but well, it, I don't think know. I don't think I did a ninety five dollar tattoo. Shoot, Man. probably since what about twenty? Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you. This was probably about eighty nine, ninety. So oh, I'm okay, long, yeah, yeah, you know I'm way right. older, so that's you know, right. yeah, yeah, that's about right. That was expensive back then. Yeah, that was expensive. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dollars, man, you crazy. Yeah, for man, real, dude. I'm she gonna charge me thirteen dollars. Yeah, yeah. like take your butt down there, let yeah. me show about Yeah, yeah. they say you pay for what you get. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You get what you pay for. There it is. Yeah. That's what I worried I was mm-hmm. looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you believe in working smart or working hard? It take both. Hmm. Try the trick. Yeah, it take both. Yeah. Nah, it take both. Like you can work smart, mm-hmm. but it's still gonna require you to work hard to figure out what it is to do smart. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You won't start smart. No. So you got you. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna take some hard work to figure out hmm. how to make how to go about it smart. And then once you go about like once you get to working smart, mm-hmm. you still got to want to work hard up front, depending on who you got working for you, just to see what it takes. Yeah. Any in in order to be a good boss, you got to be a good employee. There it is. So, yeah, you got to know what it is to be an employee to, to tell somebody else how to do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that's, that's yeah, I think it takes both. Yeah, that's how I feel about coaching too, man. Mm-hmm. I can't be a good coach unless everybody that's with me mm-hmm. good coaches. So you yep, got to yep. teach. That's yeah, right. That's, hey, listen. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, like I said, the mind only see what it's familiar with. That's right. I like that. See? So do you believe that, that there's um, perfect tattoos or not? 
do I feel like it's a perfect tattoo? Yeah. Have no. you ever seen a perfect one? No. I mm. feel like it's a, you got everybody executed different, but art is art. Art is art. That's yeah. why I don't even say like the people who work from home and do all of that. Like I'd never be like, that's a bad tattoo. Mm-hmm. Like unless I see that it's not like executed properly, like the technique not there, then that's different. Yeah, but as far as the actual art itself, as long as somebody like the person who got it like yeah. it, I feel like it's good. There you go. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's that's. I mean, because I came from that. Like, yeah, I look at all my work that I did back then, and if I was going off of that, I'd be like, hey. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's that's. I mean, when you getting better, that's just how that worked though. Yeah, that's how that worked. Look at the Cadillac truck now. Look at the one back in the G. Back then, they was like, man, it's the baddest mm-hmm. thing. But when nobody got, ain't too many people go go back and get that old Cadillac. No, nah, not, not no more. Yeah. Even though I still like them 2005s. Yeah. For some reason, that's yeah. one of my favorite trucks. Oh, the truck? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool right there, bro. I appreciate that. So do you have any advice for anybody that's young, that's looking to get off into tattooing? What kind of advice would you give them, you know, to help them out? Um, I would say, I mean, you only go get out what you put in. Hmm. Don't let social media fool you. That's all I can say. Don't let social media fool you. Like, and I feel hmm. like you never, you never master it. Like, if you get into it thinking you go master it, good luck. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, true. good luck. Because everything is always changing. Like, it's like me right now, my style of freehanding. Is almost like a. It ain't too many people doing it because there's a way easier way to do it. Mm. Like you know what I'm saying, and then most people they feel like that's the best thing. Like, but to me, I would rather draw on the skin. Like, mm-hmm. but you got people who get on the iPad and design, take pictures from everywhere, and put it all together, print it out, tattoo it on you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I just that ain't genuine. No, nah, I mean it, it's genuine depending on how you look at. It. Yeah, it's genuine if the person who who getting it want it. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So that, that's oh, what make it genuine. Like it yeah. ain't really no, you know what I'm saying? There ain't no rules to it. But that's I'm just true. saying, as far as me, yeah, in my style, I would say it ain't too many people who can do what I do, yeah. and that's what I like about it. Yeah. But see, that's that's me yeah. and how I feel about it. But to somebody else, they might be like, "Man, I want something printed off the computer." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it just depends on who you're dealing with. Is what makes it what it is. Okay. Like, because if everybody just decide they don't like freehand, then I'm going to have to figure something out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, like. But that's what makes what you you, though. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because sure. you do freehand. You do it mm-hmm. differently. So that's what makes you unique and, you know, different when it comes to tattooing. Yeah. So that's cool, man. Man, Um. so what are you willing to sacrifice to be great? Mm. What am I willing to sacrifice to be great? That's almost like a trick question. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little like tricky. Some, that sound like some Diddy done act to go people. No, oh, no, we ain't going to. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't do that. Yeah, take care. 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 Shoot, what I was 21, 22, getting in my fusion, driving to New Orleans, 17 hours, hmm. like leaving all air. They telling me it's a party this weekend. I'm like, shoot, I'm packing up my car. I'm getting ready to hop. I'm getting ready to drive to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I've already sacrificed so much to be what I am mm. already. Yeah. If it's great, that's to, for somebody else to call it. But mm-hmm. I would say, I would say, I mean, I feel like when you look at greatness, I, I feel like it's a journey, not a destination. Ooh, so I feel like it's so it ain't really something that I'm looking to get to. I would say it's looking. I, I would say it's something I'm looking to be consistent in. Yeah, and that's okay. pretty much. So it, it's kind of hard to say what would I sacrifice when I'm daily making. You know what I'm saying? I'm making mm-hmm. sacrifices daily. daily. To, that's to do right. It. Like I can't really pinpoint one thing when I say whatever that is that, that's going to derail me from what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm sacrificing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I would look at that. That's all right. So where do you see freehand tattooing going in the next five years? Um, I feel like it'll still be the same. I know I'll be better. I feel like it's, it's I plan to rebrand and restructure my whole setup. Mm-hmm. So it'll definitely be something that's more known. 
because I see it's a lot of people who trying to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not thinking about just Saginaw either. It's a mm -hmm. lot of people who do it everywhere. You can get on social media, type in freehand, and there'd be a bunch of artists that come up. But I feel like nobody has really, like, took it and, like, blew it up. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? As a thing, like, it's an option. But I want to blow it up as something like, yeah, this is it. Like, mm -hmm. this is what it is. There's only one person that I know who call himself like, the freehand king. And he, like, freestyles, like, literally freehand. Like, he don't draw nothing. He do mm. everything with the tattoo machine. Wow. Like, from beginning to end. Like, he, the dude, crazy. I think his name on Instagram, like, Freehand King or something. Mm. Freehand. Something like that. But I, I, when I seen his stuff, I'm like, dang, well, maybe I don't freehand. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. after I seen that. But, mm. I mean, I still consider it freehand because I'm drawing my idea from my yeah. mind. Like, I just ain't willing to just start tattooing you out of nowhere. Like, yeah. That. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely, it's levels to it, but I just feel like it need to be, like, pushed forward a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of creativity, though, man. Yeah. And, you know, the like you said, you've been doing it so long. And it keep but, you sharp. Yeah. That's what I like about it. It keep you sharp. Like, it keep you in tune with it because you have to be. Mm -hmm. like, you have to be. Like, you got to be sharp. You got to be consistent, like, versus just doing something on the computer. Get, like, I feel like if I was doing it on a tablet or something, I'd get bored with it. Mm-hmm. Because That's it true. don't take much to put two pictures together, blur out the middle, print it off, tattoo it on somebody. Mm. Like, so it ain't, yeah, that, that don't really, it's not really fun to me. Yeah, I feel you, man. That's like getting out doing this. Yeah. When you get out on location, man, it's a it's good different. feeling, mm -hmm. you know, than sitting at home in my comfort zone. Yeah. You know, because even as a coach, we talk about making people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I like getting put in that same position, too. Yep. Make me yep. uncomfortable to, so I can be comfortable and handle mm -hmm. that pressure. Yep. So I like that, bro. For yeah, real. man, I always tell people, too, man, one of my biggest things I tell people, man, like, when you can't move your body, move your mind. Mm. Man, that's powerful. That's that. Like, when you can't move your body, move your mind. Like, it's like me when I got shot in 2012. Mm -hmm. I used to read a lot. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to books all the time. Okay. And it was because I couldn't move. Yeah. So I read, I moved my mind when I couldn't move my body. And so that when I could move my body, I would know where to go. Mm -hmm. Or I know I would have some type of idea where I wanted to go. Yeah. Versus just moving your body. You just moving cargo around. Yeah. That's what you don't realize like that. But mm -hmm. a lot of people out here that look like zombies because they that's don't know true. where they're going. They just move. Like, Damn. So, yeah. Damn, bro. That, that's deep. I like yeah. that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a fact. Yeah. It's a fact, for real. for real. Do you ever go to any of the tattoo conventions around? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 almost like rappers, like how they don't mm -hmm. listen to other rappers. Mm -hmm. So it's like I see little stuff on social media, but I don't want to get it to the point to where I did it a little bit just so that I could say I did it. Mm -hmm. But as far as um just getting out and doing, I feel like I need to, but then again, I don't. Yeah. So it's like a, it's it's a weird little, I don't know how to explain hmm. it, man. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't want to get around so many artists to where I'm mm -hmm. like trying to fit in with them. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of yeah. go back to what you said earlier while well, I focus on this one when yeah. you might miss something. Yeah. yeah. So it's I like, like I, I take a little bit or whatever I see. And I also feel like what I'm supposed to see, I will. Like, mm -hmm. I, you don't really have to. That's true. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can get out and put yourself in a place. And whatever you see, of course, but I just don't, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> no. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I did it, but when I was doing it, it didn't feel like me. Yeah. It didn't okay. feel like me. I feel like I was trying to do something mm -hmm. that somebody else would do. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, it just, mm, it didn't feel right to me. No, that, that's true, though. I mean, we do that when you go to coaching clinics. Mm -hmm. You see all these coaches from all walks of life. Yeah. They doing this, doing that, but I'm like, but with mine, that don't work. Yeah, it's almost like you a know? pissing contest. Like yeah. you get around other people to do what you do. Yeah. And it's like I compete to the wall. It's like <laughs> I compete on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like cause you paying attention to what they do, you comparing yourself to them, yep. they comparing it to it's just I don't know. It's nah. it's weird to me, man. Yep. Like stay true being you. Yeah. That's yeah. the man. I stay in my lane and no traffic over there. Yeah, it is. I like so that. That's how I look at it. Okay. For real. So man. Look, this this been a great interview with me. Yeah. I, I appreciate you giving the time, man. Mm -hmm. um, once again, you want to tell everybody the social media so that way they can reach out to you if they want good, legitimate work and don't come in here trying to lowball. Yeah, nah. You I know. ain't gonna let them lowball. I mean, <laughs> I love the fact that my I love the fact that my reputation is that you can't lowball. Yeah, that's I love it. When yeah. I hear I see people on social media, oh he high, I'd be like, mm -hmm. yes, let them know. Mm -hmm. Let them know. It yeah. ain't that I'm. It ain't that I'm high. I know my work. That's like, right. That's how I look at it. I know my that's work. Right. 
Like, and your you know, time costs, bro. Yeah, right. Really? And that's the thing, too. Like, I mean, I got two boys right mm-hmm. there. Any time mm-hmm. that I spend away from them, you think I'm going to take five, six hours away from them that I could be spending with one of them. Mm, that's right. And you give me $195, at least I'm going to be around them. If I like, like right now, when I'm not around them, when I finally do get around them, I can mm-hmm. take them and do it. Like I can give them their time. That's right. Because I'm real big on, like, even when people see me in the gym with them, they be like, "How you get them to sit still?" I'm like, "Cause I give them attention. Mm-hmm. I give them attention. They, they know, know when it's their time. They know when it's right. not their time. And they, they not. Most of the time, you see kids acting out like that is because they never know when it's their time. Mm-hmm. They feel like they're in competition with what you got hmm. going on over here, what you got going on mm-hmm. over there. So it's like a thing with me, like they know when it's their time. Like yeah. soon, like if I'm tattooing him right there, as soon as he see the client get up or they wrapped up, he see plastic on him, he come hop in my lap yeah. and not a second sooner. <laughs> but he realized that, okay, that's daddy. He he doing what he mm-hmm. do. As soon as he get done, I'm going to go get my time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it, when you do that, it also sets up patience. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And let them, it just let them know. Like you, you it's, it's almost like you teaching them how to be a man. Because it, a man, being a man requires That's right. patience. That's right. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to know when to do. And like I always say, too, I'm going to say um, a man's ability to read the room is what makes him a man. That, so that's, that's when you, it. if you can't read the room, then man. what you what you doing in it? All day long. That's right. And, that's and that's, that's just how I look at it, even when it comes to women. Mm-hmm. When it comes to women. Like I've been reading this book called The Way of the Superior Man. Hmm. That's one of my favorite books. I t- I say any man, I don't care what age you is, read that book, man. Hmm. Okay, read that book, man. It's 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 man. I say and if you want to cut through, I would say seven chapter seventeen through twenty eight. Hmm. Blow your mind, bro. Okay, it talks about masculine, feminine energy. It talks about like hmm. how they both move and how they coexist. It talk about all of that. Like your cousin read that book, right there. I don't know. I don't you know, know the reason why I said about- because what you talking about is what he teach them boys, man. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying. Yeah, and we he, we, he we have power. We have power okay. all the time. Yeah, and, yeah, I, and I believe power. it. And I miss him since we ain't been at practice. Yeah, so yeah. you know we got to get together and yeah, man, you know man. and talk because we had some good talks. Yeah, man. It's, I, hey. I like that you got that book, so we know what to get. The way the superior man. Oh, don't get me started, man. Because she she love, she love books, man. And actually, and, she got a couple books that she wrote. Yeah, men, men, and women. And read okay. the book. They talk about all the different perspectives. Mm-hmm. Like they talk about with women. The problem is never the problem. That's one mm. thing that stood out to me. Mm. The problem is never, never the problem. Woo, he preaching. Yeah, look, the look, problem look. is never the problem. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. That's that's a fact. <laughs> that's yeah, true, bro. So that's that's you know what I'm saying? I man, look, I'm telling mm. you. Yeah, yeah, that's on both sides. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that you're a father, man, and you raising your boys. You showing people that, man, just because I do tattoos, you know, we get these weird mm-hmm. stigmas yeah. put on us, man. Mm-hmm. And that my guests and my viewers get to hear you talk about being a father. And that's, man, to me, that's man. the most important thing ever. Bro, that's the, you know, when I tell you, my kids, bro, are the reason I'm here. That's right. Are the reason I'm here. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's deep, man. Yeah. It's deep. It's deep. Like, it, it's, man. And don't yeah, lose be, that passion, bro. Oh, no, no, no. You know never. what I'm saying? I'm I'm 53 yeah. years old. My yeah. kids are grown, but them little ones that they didn't reproduce, mm-hmm. man, set yeah. me back to a whole nother yeah. future, and I, I'm loving it. Yeah, man. It's, you it's, know. A, it's a beautiful thing, man. That's it's right. It's a beautiful thing when you do it right. That's right. When you do and it right. There's no such thing as wrong. No. Nah. As long as you're doing it, there's no such thing as wrong. That's right. Because you said earlier, the most important part mm-hmm. in this time Mm-hmm. because you can't get back that time. You know, that's None why I tell it. everybody. You want to get into coaching and you got little ones, don't do it. Yeah. Because them babies are going to need you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, you the, get... and, the, and the kids nowadays are always looking for a reason to, yes. to resent you. Yes. Because they taught that, though. Mm-hmm. They taught that. Like, they taught, like, oh, if they not, like, it's, it's everything is a problem. Mm-hmm. Everything is a problem, but you never know the solution. That's right. It's almost like how I tell people, too, when they um when they out here teaching kids, like, we taught as black people spending money. Hmm. You see, it's everybody spending money. Everybody got money, quote unquote. Hmm. And you see all these people teaching their kids how to spend money, but they don't teach them how to get money. Hmm. That's right. So it's like it's all it's backwards. Like That's so, you right. teach them how to spend money. You teach them a habit of spending money, mm-hmm. but you never teach them how to acquire the money. That's right. Or so say, yeah, right. That mm-hmm. too. So you know what I'm saying. So it's it's a thing where, like, once they get to that point, like once they get to that point to where they can't, like, you can't give it to them no more. Who you, where you think they're going to get it from? That's right. 
and these kids now nah, there's no morals there's no hmm. nothing they're not like they're different yeah they no, it ain't that they different. The parents Look, are different. There it is. The parents are different. There it is. Yeah, the parents is different. Like it ain't it ain't really that because the thing everybody's so scared to raise their kids how they was raised. Mm-hmm. But they don't realize that that's what made them who they are. That's right. So it's like, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, like it gets softer and softer every generation. Man, that's true. Softer and softer because everybody like, man, I ain't, man, I'm, I mean, let me go nowhere. Y'all can go. That's thing you know, mm-hmm. oh, kid shot somewhere. What what happened? Oh, I mm-hmm. let him go over his friend's house. I ain't know that they was gonna go skip, go do this. Yeah, so it's like it's a uh, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, it's deep, man. Man, man K. Rod, you ain't more than you more than just a tattoo artist, brother. Yeah, you're a young philosopher and you teaching, man. You preaching and they, I, they I respect that. They call me the that. tattoo therapist, man. Hey. Every time I have people come in here, every time I have mm-hmm. people come in here and get tattoos, they be like, man, bro, like, cause I move off energy. Mm-hmm. I move off energy. That's okay. why I tell you too. I respect your energy. Oh, appreciate that. I respect that. your energy, man. From the appreciate time you that. walked in, I felt your energy before you even got in the room. Wow. So it's like I looked up at the camera and I seen you walking in. I said, "Oh, dang, that's crazy! I didn't even know that." So you, you probably seen me wobbling up your stairs. No, I'm talking about I, like I, I didn't know that you was close because I had mm-hmm. both of them. You ain't seen them. Both of them was on my chest. Like, okay. So I couldn't really see, but when I looked up, when mm-hmm. I finally lifted up over the one of them head, I was like, "Oh, okay, dog. There you go." I said, mm-hmm. "I felt you coming in." Wow. Pause. That's Pause. Cool. Yeah. 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 yeah no. Uh, diddy, no. No. Diddy, 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 no. Yeah, man, that's 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 dope, man. I respect you though. I yeah, got a lot of respect for what you do, man. Thank you. I have been hearing your name for a long time. Thank but you. But I never really got to yeah. you, you know what I'm saying, personally. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't see you in passing and everything, and then I knew you was related to Jameese yeah. and BJ. So, you know, and yeah, then when I me mean, and Jameese talked and he was like, I got one for you. Yeah. And he was like, You gotta go get him. That's yeah. why I reached out, bro. Man, you know, I'm be, glad we don't know. You see, everybody see me in passing. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody says. I see That's you how I supposed to be, man. Look, I be moving. That's what I supposed to be. Moving. That's why this gonna be. It's gonna be nice. Everybody get to see me and you. Cause mm-hmm. I did some promotion, mm-hmm. but then tonight I'm gonna promote it even more. So yeah. I'm gonna show live. Yeah, you know, I gotta do everybody send it know to you, man. Yes, I post. Sir. I post. Oh, yeah, I got sure. you, bro. I post. Sure. I definitely thought you had more questions though. Huh? Every time, every time somebody come and interview me, I always be like, when it's over with, I be like, dog, I got so much more to say. Uh, you know, you know what I'm about. I, I got certain questions I do right, mm-hmm. but then, like you said, when you feel energy, mm-hmm. I feel conversation. And yeah. sometimes this be this been shut off for the longest. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just having conversation. Yeah, just to me, talking. that's the most real thing. What it is, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because you know? the crazy thing, even what I'm freestyling at the end is based off your energy. Wow. It's that's based off right. your energy, and I don't mean to sound like I'm just like a. No, I you know appreciate what I'm saying? But it's that. Though. Yeah, even you know? a part, even a part, like. About the kids, I felt the need to say for some reason. Mm. I don't know why, but I felt the need oh, to say know. that. Like, yeah, so it was, yeah. Hey, he don't man. make no mistakes, bro. Hey, hey. For real, trust me. Yeah, that's a fact. You no, know, he don't make no mistakes, and it yeah, was much needed. Yeah, this interview was much needed, and I appreciate you man. coming on the More Than the Coach podcast, yeah, for bro. Sure, for for sure. real, and anytime you ever want me to come back, hey, mm-hmm. I'm here. I want to see some of your therapy when you be working. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's some of that. Yeah. And, you know, listen, I done had some people come in here. And leave like hmm. and call me back later on, like man, bro, that conversation we had, man. <laughs> we, hey, I don't know what made you want to tell me that, man, but hmm. yeah, that hey, that was that was right on right yeah. there, bro. Like, but yeah, man, it's it's I just say life is simple, man. Hmm. We make it complicated. That's true. We make it complicated. Life is very simple. That's true. And what I mean by simple is when you think about it, when you think about what really matters, it's not that many things. No. So mm-hmm. everything else, and we focus on the external more than the internal. Mm-hmm. And if we focus more on the internal, then we realize how much the external really don't matter. That's and I true. feel like I was already on that. But when I lost my mom and my sister, it definitely made me focus mm-hmm. more on the internal. Sorry to hear about that. Too, yeah, yeah, it really. definitely made me focus more mm-hmm. on the internal. Like, because yep. I felt like up until then, I was so focused and running around and trying to get money and doing all of this and doing all of that, which was cool. But I didn't get him as much time as I could have. Mm, yeah. And that's all they used to talk about. Yeah. That's all they used to talk about. Hey, 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 relax. <laughs> they, um, they ready to play now. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They've been they good are. for over yeah. On, yeah. a little while. So that's a good thing. Now, nah, you have to use the restroom? Come yeah. here. Come here. Y'all can come. Come on. Yeah, y'all come, come over on. so everybody can see the boys. Yeah, one of them finna get to get this hair braided. So he's. Uh oh. Oh. Crazy. 
Then the other one, here. LL Cool J right now. Come here. No, I see that. Got some Come Allen Iverson braids. Yeah. Look at yeah. him. Big old smile. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> this is Kanai. What's up, yeah. Kanai? Say hi to the camera. Yeah. yeah. He loves yeah. saying hi, too. <laughs> Bro, he, he want to dance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, look dance. at him. He ain't no camera. You on camera? Do your dance. <laughs> Do your dance, daddy. Uh, 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 uh. See, even the kids <laughs> love them. Look at him. It's Come a here. dance battle. Yeah. That's all right. Come here, Dad. Look, mm -hmm. he's straight to the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a ball bro. Yeah, it is. It is. For sure. Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here, Dad. Yeah, and that. I mean, even when it comes down to, uh, come here. Eric, come here. You want what he had. It was already sitting on the table. Mm -hmm. You chose the, you walked right past it until you seen him with it. Love them cage on them. Yeah, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Watch out, watch out. The camera back here, he want to put his, he want to put his oh, two yeah. fingers up. Come yeah. here, I'm on camera. Come you here. Come by your dad, come then here. you can see him. Come here, Roro. He's posing. Come here. As y'all see, we got special guests on the show yeah, yeah, tonight. Yeah, 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 man. This was fatherhood all yeah. about, though, y'all. Look, look hmm. at the camera. Say hi. <laughs> He done took the money off my. <laughs> we are, baby. No, okay, it's still okay, Yeah, yep. yeah. Say hi. Hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, That's all right. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, man, it's 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 like it's very important. Mm -hmm. like, even when I like people, see why I call them dad, daddy, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's 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 funny because I think it for some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like, daddy, like, it was a thing where I just wanted them to be able to work. Like, it is, it's mm -hmm. So, like, calling them kind of gives me that, yeah, that joy from when I was little, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like that. I yep. wanted when I was little, so it's like it's a thing where it's like a I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to explain it, but it just feels good to say, yeah. like, and then know that I'm being it too at the same time, yeah, it is. Yeah. What? Hmm. You want a nugget? Oh, it's time to eat now. We're going to get ready to wrap it up yeah. so you can take care of the yeah, baby, man. man. For sure. For sure. For sure. Man, once again, brother, I appreciate you being on the podcast and joining us today, man. Mm -hmm. You know, inviting us on, you know, to the location, man. Yeah. And it's a beautiful set you got here. And is there any last words you got for the viewers? Um... Man, I would just say be yourself. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. Like, I, I feel like that's very important right now. Like, in this world where mm -hmm. there's so many characters to play, mm -hmm. and everybody feel like they're picking a the character to play, <laughs> just find yourself and be yourself, man. Be yourself. I feel like that's the most valuable thing you can do right now. That's right. The social media show got yeah, a bunch of actors on it. Man, listen. For real. You ain't just on it. Like, you, it's to the point, it's getting to the point to where when I, hey, 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 relax. Go sit down. Go have a seat. Mm -hmm. Go have a seat, both of y'all. Go have a seat. But yeah, I feel like it's a thing where you, uh, everybody's trying to keep up with something they don't even know, and it's like a big circle. Mm -hmm. Everybody going in circles. Yeah. And until you step out that circle, you won't realize that it's a circle. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, I mean that's that's something I feel like I stepped out. I stepped out the circle when I moved to Louisiana, mm -hmm. uh, my twelfth grade year. Okay. I felt like I was, you know, I was popular. We had a group called the Hood Star Boys. We was. Mm -hmm. Doing everything like we was popular kids, like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. And I felt like I had to step outside the circle. And when I stepped outside the circle, and moved to Louisiana, I had I, that's where I found my confidence. Okay. When I separated myself mm -hmm. from what I had going on, yep. and figured out that it wasn't just because I was hanging with them, it, I was the cool one. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. And now it was like a thing where it was, I went on a personal journey, and it worked. Okay. And then I came back and went against it and got shot. So yeah, mm. and that's why I never blamed the guy who shot me. Okay. Because it was something that I did on my own. Like, I had to put myself there. Like, yeah. that's another thing, accountability. I'm going yeah. to wrap it up. No, wrap no. It up. Yeah, accountability is a is a big thing, too. Like, like, even with me getting shot, like, I felt like I had to hold my. It wasn't really him. He could have been there. The gun would have been there. Mm -hmm. The ground, the building, everything was there. But it was up to me to put myself in a situation. Mm -hmm. So anything that I put myself in, I got to hold myself accountable for that. True. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. You yeah. can, it's probably fun to blame everybody else and it feel better. Hey, 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 relax. It feel better to blame everybody and, you know, 
mm-hmm. temporarily. Yeah. But the only way you'll get that true, that true happiness out of the situation is is holding yourself accountable okay. for your part of it. Yeah. And that's the only way you're gonna grow from it. Um man. Yeah, so that's that's one thing that I say, man. And then as far as like even when I'm getting ready to drop a um a, a fitness line too. Mm. It's gonna be it's gonna be centered around daily deposits. Mm. And that's that's what I work out. I call it daily deposits because I feel like I'm in deposit. Hey, 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 relax. Mm. I'm only gonna say it one time. <laughs> row row, row row. You get get over on the other side of the couch. Row row um, the energy man. But yeah, he he definitely. Um <laughs> But um, yeah, I feel like it's a thing where I say daily deposits. So I'm putting in something daily, mm-hmm. depositing something daily for my body because I never know when my body gonna need me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that was what happened with my mom and my sister. Mm-hmm. It was they they never really worked out or did anything like that, mm-hmm. and they were overweight. You know what I'm saying? So that was something that I had to come to the realization of too. Okay. They never really worked out. My sister was starting to work out before she passed. But it was like a thing where once it hit them, their body needed them, but they didn't have what their mm. body needed to keep them going. Like, mm. So that was that wow. was just the end of it. So that when you look at it like that, it definitely put it in perspective. So yeah. when you asked me earlier what motivates me, there it is. like okay. making sure that I'm doing enough to where when my body needs me, even when it comes to putting money in your mm-hmm. saving and stuff like that, they say save your money so that one day it can save you. Mm. I look at my body the same way. Okay. Man, yeah, sorry. Well, you dropped some jewels out here today, man. And again, I'm sorry about the loss of the family. Yeah, I mean, my wife knew your mom's. Y'all yeah. used to work together, and I won't forget we seen them all at dinner one time. Hey. Before all that, we was out at uh, Texas Row. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right yeah. after that. Yep. I remember that. Yep. That was mad it's at you and Kobe too. about them Spartan yeah. jerseys. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The Spartan. I remember that. That, I remember yeah. we the next week. Them. Yeah. It was. Yeah. We talked about that. We was like, man, we just seen them all. Again. It was two weeks later. It was two weeks mm. later because they, my sister passed on the fourteenth. So, yeah, two weeks later because Aileen's birthday is on the thirty first. So yeah, mm. like about two weeks later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, I, yeah, I, man, I praise you because you got a lot of strength. That you know, that break a brother down, bro. Yeah, it do. For it real. do. But I feel like strength comes from weakness. Mm. Strength yeah. comes from weakness. In order to be yeah. strong, you got to know where you're weak. That's right. And you got to so go that's, through some things. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the right. whole thing. Like, and I mean, and that's all a part of it. Mm-hmm. That's all a part of it. The accountability and all of that. Like, like re- that's all a part of being a man, reading the room, mm-hmm. realizing where you went wrong at hmm. so that you don't go wrong again. That's right. I call it, and that's the last thing I'm going to say. I promise. <laughs> My mom be going a million miles per hour. But I tell people, like with the people that I mentor, like even when I'm talking to the clients and stuff, I look at it like this. Even if you're going in a circle, if you trip over something, pick it up. Because hmm. you don't know you're going in a circle. Mm-hmm. But if you pick up, whatever, it's, that's how I look at accountability. Mm-hmm. If you pick up the rock that you tripped over, you will never trip over it again. Mm. So that mean, And what I mean by that is acknowledge how you tripped. That's like, right. was you paying attention? Mm-hmm. Did you trip over this before? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and well, if that rock did, just can be a simple yeah, thing. That, that's the it's, whole thing. It can be anything. That's that rock right. could really symbolize anything mm-hmm. when you think about it. But it's just that. And what I mean by it is just acknowledging the problem. Yeah. Acknowledging how you got on the ground. Yeah. That's true. Like it, it's, you know what I'm saying? Did you trip? Did you, did you skip? Did you, you know what I'm saying? Anything. Whatever it was to make sure that you never get back to that again to the best of your ability mm-hmm. is what I look at as being a man. Hmm. There it is. You that's pick it. up all the rocks you trip over, you can go in that circle as free as you want to. <laughs> so that's is. that's the whole thing. Until you realize and keep ready to step out the circle. But until <laughs> then, pick up them rocks, man. Pick them up. And I'm going to leave it at that. Man, bro, yeah. thank you for a great interview, man. man. I appreciate you. Know, you. Real. Now, this was great. I'm, I'm glad Jamish got us to look yeah. up and do this, man. Yeah. You know, more than the coach family. I know they're going to enjoy this interview. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to talk about the fact that he was the first person who bought me my tattoo machine. Well, he bought me my first tattoo machine. Good man. Yeah, we ain't gonna leave that out there. Mm-hmm. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's all right. Hundred and twenty dollars. That a little bit more than what you pay for your first tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show it to you yeah. in this yeah. interview too. Yeah. You gonna be like, boy, you yeah. going down here? Yeah, yeah man. For real. Yeah. So I can get. I forgot what they call it. What a cover up or mm-hmm. yeah, cover up. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah. So mm-hmm. maybe it gets something you know going, and then you know. Everybody get on me because that's her name. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you gotta yeah, you gotta go Let's better see. than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can go harder than that for okay. sure. There it is, see. On your dime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you say on your dime, yeah. On your dime, I got time. There it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all, this your boy Coach Marshall. I'm here with K Ron. Hey, we thank y'all for tuning in tonight. It's been a great interview. It's gonna be more to come. We're gonna get to seeing when you're doing some real work, having this therapy with his clients. Mm-hmm. So you wanna let them know your hours of operations or you know how they so they can come and get some tats from uh, you, bro? I go by appointment only. There you go. Um and the reason why I go that go by that is because I just like to be organized. Mm-hmm. It ain't that I think mm-hmm. I'm too much and nothing like that. It's just I like to know what I got coming up. That's right. Um so yeah, that's I go by appointment only. Um I have to require a deposit of hundred and fifty dollars mm-hmm. to book an appointment. Um yeah, and other than that, just yeah, just bring me your ideas. It is. And I get you together. And if you want to see them, tattoos by K Rod Instagram. Y'all check mm-hmm. them out. Yeah. They there. Real. But my brother, once again, it's been great. For sure. I For appreciate sure. you, man. Appreciate you, man. It's an awesome time. So until next week, y'all, this is your boy, Coach Marshall, from the More Than a Coach podcast. Peace. Peace out.